Okay. Here are the traditional objections. They do have objections. Ethics equals the law, and the way you mandate your objections is to make laws against certain things. Traditionalists say treating sex differently. Libertarians feel it's up to each individual to determine his or her own good. Human dignity lies in our capacity to pursue our own good as we see fit, provided we don't interfere with another person's pursuit of his or her own good. Of course, the traditional view says that to engage in sex without love or to engage in sex not open to the possibility of procreation is to engage in sex that violates our essential nature and dignity. So we have one set of values here. We have another set of values here. And we have a conflict of values. These values don't want to relent. These values don't want to relent. And so what's the mediator between these two sets of values? The law, whether you like it or not. I told you in 2012, someone was running for president, wanted to take the law and go back to no procreation. I'm sorry, no uh, uh, contraception. All forms of it off the table because it violates the essential nature and dignity of humanity. Just going back to traditional sexual morality. And the world lived under that whether they were happy with it or not. And the law then defines the framework of the social contract we live in. And by the way, those parties have not gone away. We also have to deal seriously with venereal diseases. Most venereal diseases are treatable. Genital herpes is somewhat different. It's a chronic condition. Gonorrhea is almost reaching epidemic proportions right now. It has almost become resistant to the best antibiotics we have. Almost. Of course, we have AIDS. What's the difference between HIV and AIDS, by the way? We have HIV. HIV is entire life. Is the virus. And then it used to be the, 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 uh, the uh, statistic I was about 10 years on average, and then the virus turns active and becomes AIDS. We have no cure for AIDS. We do, however, have treatments that, I don't know if it suppresses, I think suppress might be the right word, suppresses the virus from turning into AIDS, but we have no cure for it. I don't know if I have to get graphic with you. Transmitted by anal sex, vaginal sex, intravenous needles and syringes. I just heard this after the US Open. Uh, oh my gosh. You, say again? There was a black, t Arthur Ashe, very famous, very, very good, ball player and after he retired he confessed to everybody that he had AIDS. He got it when he had an operation. It was through int intravenous blood transfusion. <laughs> you can get it that way. Blood transfusions, pregnancy. And we should get over this too. AIDS is not a homosexual disease. It's a disease that's transmittable between all groups and classes of people. It's most dangerous, I believe, with heterosexuals because you can go back ten partners and not know unless you get a blood test. What, hang on a minute. When uh, Corey, my youngest one, was at Michigan State, I happened to mention him. He's my little babe magnet. And I said, you, you do get a blood test before you go beyond the bounds of talking to one another, right? And he said, I said, because you know that you, when you sleep with someone, you sleep with the 10 previous partners as well. I said, you know, one out of four of you. And he says, try one out of three. That's what they were teaching him back at MSU back in, oh, I don't know, maybe 10, 12 years ago now. This statistic says 44, and this was the latest one I got. It always changes. They only go, you're usually about two years behind the curve with the statistics. 44% of young people between 13 and 14 don't even know that you're living with AIDS. If you don't get a test, you don't know. Simple test, just give blood. You'll find out right away. You want to know people. I don't want to preach to the choir, but you want to know so that you protect other people. And there's also now mechanisms we have to suppress the virus so that you can have a longer life and you don't. It's, it's, it's a horrible death. It's not fun. Carl. The current highest transmittal rate is white single women. White single women, right. And then we black women follow very closely. Right behind them. So there's a vulnerability, and vulnerability requires self-management because you can't manage. We all can manage, okay? So I don't want to... Traditionists also say there's threats to the family. 
Alarming trend, sharp rise in single parent families. Most single parents are women. Single women and their children tend to be poor. In 2016, up to 1.7 million children homeless in America, and most with just single moms. It's just horrible statistic, people. Horrible statistic. And they're the hidden ones. You don't see them. Many single moms are teenagers. Teenage motherhood places a great burden upon them and their children. There are possible remedies. No sex, no children. It's not impossible not to have intercourse. It's a choice. Fewer divorces, fewer single parents. Sexual revolution glamorized easily has led to teen participation if sex outside marriage is freely available and without moral stigma. That's the stigma, you can't do it or you get socially castigated. If sexual adventure and variety are prized at least as much as monogamy, if love and commitment are no longer seen as natural accompaniments to sex, then marital ties inevitably weaken. That's why Monday I started with those five basic principles of what it means to be fully human and fully love. Genuine caring, commitment, respect, sincerity, and loyalty to one another. And you all said they were important in relationships, regardless of whether you tilt towards traditional or libertarian. Personal fulfillment, perhaps sex is not just like tennis. Perhaps it's not just an afternoon's activity. Sex has a strong sexual component to our sexual lives. How we learn to deal with our sexuality is crucial to the kind of people we become. Our sexual identity is a critical feature of our personal identity. Our sexual relationships are among the most powerful and influential relationships we can have. So I'm going to assume, regardless of your orientation, that everybody's had their first love. You know, the first love cuts the deepest, you know. So this is the word picture for first love. I think I can do this. You can't see anything beyond that person. Nothing. Your eyes are like the twinkling of stars on moonlit nights, and her name was Rosie Azabi, and she said, oh, say that to me again. I love the way that sounded, and I only had eyes for her. I couldn't see anybody. And then, almost always, it doesn't work, and you have to, oh, I hate this part of the lecture. It hurts. Broken hearts. Say again? I was like, why are you trying to make us bring the trauma? No, no, I'm not. I'm giving you hope because then we try again. Now, this is the second time around. Oh, I see you. I can see you too. <laughs> Gotta leave a little room because that hurt way too much. Oh, then it should have. But then there's always three strikes and you're out, you know. So this is the third time around. It's like we'll just be friends with benefits. <laughs> Jada. Um, <laughs> today through exploitation we're saying that it's okay we're saying it's to it's that having multiple partners getting pregnant as a teen everything's okay because we're glamorizing it I think that's the perception hang on a minute so here's a question no self-revealing I'm just kind of curious so wait Way over here is the extreme of libertarian sexual morality. Is your generation turning a little bit back this way? Because you think that's too far out? Or no? I'm just curious. My perception is it is that this is a little too far out. I mean, quite frankly, the generation of the 60s made a big mistake. Free love does not work. There's no such thing as a free lunch, and there's no such thing as free love. Carl. I know personally in the LGBT community, um, I would say as a whole, we as a group have realized that instead of just you know being with anybody, um, you know, especially because we're more susceptible to uh, transmittable diseases. Is, <laughs> it's kind of funny because people I talk to, especially in, in talking about sexual morality, all we, I'm going to get a little graphic, all we give a shit about is being able to have the same type of responsibility, rights and responsibility. Yeah, sure, sure. Be able to just have a relationship with somebody. 
Sure. I want to be as miserable as you know a heterosexual couple. I want to be able to go and get married and then adopt a baby. Or, and, and, you know, and I think that we're pulling back from to to an extent the little far left libertarian and saying we just want to you know. Yeah, I hear you. Remember we did that when we talked about, about feminism too, how we went from here to here and suddenly women realized it wasn't being equal to men, they wanted access to power because power is what runs the world. Yeah, I think there is an adjustment being made. Go ahead. I think the media has a lot to do with it. I mean, constantly, no matter what it is, you turn on the television, you turn on the news, commercials in between, it's getting thrown into your face. I mean, honestly, me personally, I, I noticed that. I told the professor I was gone in the Middle East for God, almost five years. And coming back and just watching everything change for so long, you know. Uh, again, bombarded with you know, it's, it's sexual this, sexual that. Uh, you know, oh, be free. And to a certain degree, yes, I agree. But, you know, once again, as the gentleman up front said, where do you draw the line? Now it's got me enough to more than want to buy property somewhere in the mountains. <laughs> it's got me that I hear that. I hear that. Okay. Therefore, sex must be viewed as more than just a pleasant activity. Does your sex life contribute to your sense of worth and dignity? Is it consistent with your most important goals? Does it reflect the most important kind of person you want to be? Is it the sex life of a mature person? And does it help you build the kind of relationships you most value? And I'm going to suggest you can do it on this end, you can do it on this end. It's what your personal commitment is to your personal life and what you want your life to be like. And if you incorporate certain values and you stay loyal to them, you might get the relationship that you're looking for. Of course, it requires another party's willing to enter into the same agreement with you. Okay, and you can see it if you want to on both the traditional end and on the libertarian end. It can work. Saying that, libertarians are not against marriage. Many of them have vibrant marriages that have lasted as long as the traditional people have. They don't reject that but they did incorporate more freedom into finding their mate than perhaps the traditional people did. Of course, there's always the naturalist argument. Sex organs and sexual activity are natural phenomenon. They have their own natural manifestations and purposes. We can just, now, that's just biological. Here comes the value judgments. We can distinguish natural from unnatural sex and natural from unnatural use of our sex organs. Therefore, since what is natural is moral, what is unnatural is immoral, we can distinguish moral from immoral sex. What's the fallacy in that argument, people? I mean, there's plenty. I, my only argument there is there's plenty of other species in the world that have. Other than the natural. Uh -huh. That's right. Which may go back to the fact that we're flawed by nature, or not. But the traditional value does not allow for that. It is very self-contained. And that may step on toes and it may not. Normal. But with the traditional value itself, would you say that now with the progressive science, I mean, beforehand, what these values were set down, even when they do, yeah, I, I hear that even when they do look, the, 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 I, I don't know if I want to use the word extreme for either one of them, but the further you go to the traditional side, I mean, literally, there was no, there was no birth control. Uh, you got someone pregnant, you married them. Uh, well, there was birth control in the old days. It was called the rhythm method. 